Welcome to the guide to become a master with Sableye's faint attack skill. Sableye is a Pokemon I have been playing a lot lately because Sableye is in brilliant lane phase and his faint attack gives you insane map control. You can expect the following from this video. In-depth skill analysis. Map control. Best build. And a full game with commentary. Enjoy and let me know in the comments if you like this video. Let's go for the skill first. Faint Attack. Faint Attack becomes available at level 6 and replaces Astonish. It will let you throw dummy Yoss energy to a designated location. While the dummy energy remains at a location, that location and the area around it will be visible to your team. Dummy energy can remain at up to 5 locations at a time and will remain there for up to 25 seconds or if an enemy walks on top of it. When this happens, that energy explodes in an area, dealing damage over time for 4 seconds and decreases the movement speed of enemies in for 4 seconds by 70% initially and decreasing gradually. You can hold up to 3 uses in reserve and cannot use it more than once every second. Also note that placing the dummy energy does not break stealth. Stealth is only broken when an enemy takes damage from the dummy energy. Watch how this stealth break radius is rather big. Be aware that you do not stack your dummy energy, you can see here that it does not stack damage nor the slow effect. Now let's check out the faint attack placement and therefore map control. During a Pokemon Unite game, there are three important phases, namely lane phase, objective phase, and Rayquaza's phase. Sableye is an absolute monster early lane phase, but this will not be included in details since the skill Faint Attack only becomes available on level 6. Just make sure to early invade against special attackers as enemy jungler or steal the precious energy from your enemy laners with your thief skill, and try to get some stacks. Also take note that your dummy energy is not visible inside bushes. That is why you always want to place them in the bushes where the enemy most likely will enter. Well before the 7 minute mark, you will be in your lane placing the dummy energy here, here, and here. This will alert you of an enemy gank, and it allows you to safely pressure the enemy laners. Just before the 7 minute mark, your task is to either invade the jungle, or prepare your wards in a line here. This will provide you a decent amount of time to take the objective, or give vision where and when the enemy will try to take over the objective. Between the 7 minute mark, and slightly before the 2 minute mark, is the fun part for Sableye. You can really just roam around laying traps for the squishy jungler, and stun support your team, especially with the super speed build, that I will show in a moment. But first the most important phase of any Pokemon Unite game, the Rayquaza phase, by now there should be around a minute 20 left on the timer. Rush to the center and place your wards in this line. This will slow the enemy down tremendously, let alone that they will come in with only half of their health bar. If you kite the fights well enough you can keep on laying the traps here, where these two bushes are the most important. Sometimes it happens that you are a bit late to the fight. Try to come in from the top, and it is never a bad idea to drop some dummy energy here, to grand vision of any possible last hit attempt by the enemy. Last tip, make sure you keep your vision up around Rayquaza when you are ripping it with your team. Having vision of this one last enemy is very important. Because Sableye is a gorilla fighter, you need to pop in and out of a fight. The best way to do this is to utilize as much speed as possible. To achieve this, you select the following items at Experience Share and Float Stone. Assuming you have the items at level 30, then this will net you a total of plus 300 flat speed. If you combine this with an emblem build with only flat speed emblems, then you are pushing this an easy extra plus 300 flat speed. Now combine this massive speed increase with your passive and your float stone and you will outrun an X speed user. Watch this. Since we are now so fast, let us quickly dive into the actual gameplay. Ready, 
In this game, I will be laning with Charmander, trying to give him as much experience as possible. Even though I wield the experience share item, I only really need two energy orbs to stack. The enemy is kind enough to leave one Bunnelby and let me score for multiple stacks. I notice my teammate is fighting, so instead of more farm, I turn around and join the kill, resulting in another free stack. I use my thief skill to steal some energy from Snorlax, making the fourth stack and level possible. I want to retreat, since Snorlax's lane partner should arrive any second now. However, my teammate wants to put some more pressure on him. I see Dragonair retreating into the bush, so I quickly push him with knockoff, almost getting the kill. But since Sableye is a gorilla fighter, I back off and let him walk. Luckily our teammate Tyranitar jumps in and finishes him off. One complete knockoff combo can remove 50% of an special attacker's health, so I run around and take the other 50. Unfortunately, Dragonair catches up to me and takes me out. Let's fast forward here. I try to signal my teammates to take the center farm that will spawn at the 8 minute mark. Also decide to speed up the jungle clear of our jungler. We quickly farm the camp and take out Snorlax. Now I noticed their jungler wasn't at the middle fight, so I went to investigate if the blue buff was up, and it is. After I took out Dragonair, I noticed that bot lane is being pushed, leaving their goal wide open for a juicy 30 score. I steal them berries and join the next couple of fights. See how I always proc this bush. This will deny any escapes and grant vision of an extra enemy wanting to join the battle. Since bottom objective arrived, I run down the lane to lay down my vision wards. Two seconds later I see no one is coming and decide to score to get my final stack. Then I turn to the enemy jungle once again and this time I get a free clear. Because they took Rejilecki, I know I have to be careful for their incoming defenses. So I lay down a trap here to make sure I have an escape route ready. My Unite move is ready, and I am willing to use it. I always recommend using your Unite. In my opinion, you can better miss a ult, than not use it at all. In this case, I hit them both perfectly, resulting in a double kill. I abandon the glacing chase to help the Urshifu when you get the chance to ignore the enemy tank and go straight for the backline attackers, then always do. In this case we overextend past the Snorlax and jump the Pikachu catching both at a weak point. At this point the enemy just lost it and started throwing their bodies against us, constantly having more of us versus less of them. I even thought I wasn't needed anymore and wandered off into the enemy jungle for some easy experience.
Note how I put my dummy energy here. This will provide extra pressure and vision for any incoming enemies. Here again, place them in the bushes so the enemy won't see them for maximum chance of hitting and spotting them. Weirdly enough, the enemy Glacian and Snorlax both came from the center area. Also, Glacian just left the fight, probably low on health. One of my wards just picked up a wild Pikachu, enabling Urshifu to engage with his Unite move. I came too late to the score. Having full energy is really bad for Sableye, since he then cannot heal with knockoff. So I ran into the home base. This Glacian is really scared of the faint and dummy energy, avoiding it at all cost, giving me the chance to escape. Due to the placement of the dummy energy, I now have full vision of any enemy movement from north to south. After the 3 minute mark you usually do not want to use your unite move, and save it for the rake was a fight, but in this case it was a nice double kill. Now I need to double up on the farming to get my unite move back up in about 1 minute. Sadly Charizard is not letting me have the farm, what can I say? Solo queue. Sadly Charizard stopped my goal, luckily he didn't chase me into their jungle since my entire team is not at all close by. This gives me the opportunity to lay down a perfect vision path, although most of their team is in bot lane going to fight to score. Tornitor and Cleefable absolutely nailed this team battle, leaving me the job to find the last Pokemon standing. After this beautiful stun lock, my team swoops in and we get a power play. I run to their side to place the dummy energy, eventually dealing massive damage to Glacian and Dragonite, labeling them both as Sitting Duck. Look at Dragonite, he only has 50% health left. Snorlax tries his best to steal, but it is hopeless. Our team gets Ray and completely overscored to win this game. Definitely not needed in this game, but to show you guys how I would defend multiple home bases. Place it to a stacks of dummy energy like this on both bases. Now wait at the jump pad for any enemy attack. The dummy energy on the other base will prevent the enemy from scoring. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next guide.